Uh, hi, uh, this session is Open API, which is a new way forward for API documentation, design, and tools. Uh, this session presents uh, working to implement Open API on multiple different areas, like uh, documentation, Nova, Magnum, and MeQA. So we are discussed Open API during the pre preparation for this session. And the discussion is very uh, in interesting and very in uh, productive. And uh, we have gotten uh, many ideas for Open API, and I, have, I am already satisfied for before this session. Uh, thanks to all, uh, all members, and you all, you all uh, audience also uh, satisfy. That is my hope. Uh, okay, uh, let's start this session. Alex, please introduce yourself. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Alex Xu. Uh, I'm uh, most time working on the NOVA and uh, NOVA code reviewer and uh, most time active on the uh, NOVA API team. And I come from the Intel. And I'm Ann Gentle. I, um, this is the first time I've had a slide with my new employer, Cisco. I recently, after five and a half years at Rackspace, decided to really challenge myself in the area of APIs. So that's my new goal. Hello. Uh, I am oh? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Motohiro Otsuka. Uh, to, uh, come from NEC. Uh, I am at Magnum Corp. Core Review. Uh, hi, uh, I am Ken Omichi. Uh, I am a QAPTL and Nova Core Reviewer from NEC America. So, uh, this is today's agenda. Uh, first of all, uh, we uh, will explain uh, introduction, uh, overview of Open API, and uh, as the next, uh, we we will explain reason and merit why we need to apply Open API to OpenStack projects uh, from different multiple viewpoints like documentation, implementation side, and so on. At the last, uh, uh, so we will explain how to apply Open API to each project, like documentation and Nova ooh, and uh, Magnum, uh, sorry, uh, the, end, the end of slide is cut, cut it now. I'm not sure. So, uh, so, okay, the first is the uh, introduction of Open API. We, OpenStack Committee has an Open API working group, uh, sorry, uh, API working group for consistent API design. Uh, across whole OpenStack projects. Uh, so in this working group, we have defined Open, open API as a standard way for describing RESTful API document. And we need to work together to apply Open API across OpenStack project. In this session, you will run overview of, and the merit of Open API for end users and contributor developers, and how to use op and de implement Open API on each project. And so, at the last, uh, what is the next step to use and apply Open API standard? So, uh, there is a several standard format to describe. RESTful API design and documentation, like uh, Open API, WADL, RML, and Blueprint. So, by comparing other format, uh, what is the Open API? Open API is called as Swagger last month, but the name is changed from Swagger to Open API last, uh, last year. And uh, Open API is a simple format, uh, uh, simple format for describing uh, REST API. And uh, 
Open API is very readable for both machine and human. And then it is easy to share documentation between server side and client side developers. And in addition, Open API is very flexible for fitting the complex API like Nova API. Nova API is very huge and very complex due to some inconsistency. And uh, there is a lot of use, usage, example like uh, IBM Watson, uh, Amazon uh, API Gateway, Kubernetes, and more. Next, uh, Anne will talk about uh, reason for describe, uh, this using uh, Open API from documentation viewpoint, please. Yes, thanks. That was a great introduction to the formats, the standards, and I bring up really retro things like keyboards and typewriters, because there's really good reason to apply these standards to documentation to help out our users. So, of course, we want to provide consistency. We want the documentation to be helpful. And that builds trust with the consumers of the APIs. So, how do we get there? I'm going to talk a little bit about the current state some of the tools and the movement towards a sustainable process. So this is the plan and the future, but let's talk a little bit first about what we've seen so far. In the Kilo release, we had over 120 dot contributors and Mataka, it's still well in the hundreds. And so in each release I'm seeing, even in the last two years, more and more API dot contributions, which is amazing. I was actually surprised to find that there was a release where API docs were the most contributed documentation across the entire doc suite. So we had the most commits in the last release, nearly 650 commits just to the API site repository. And the it's just great to see the number of contributors. And uh, I just updated this slide. By doing a count on all of the documented <laughs> operations, this is for um, an operation is what I'm calling a git put post patch delete um, head call um, for a particular endpoint. And that includes a version, that includes a resource. Um, and so combined across the 12 services that are documented on developer.openstack.org, this is how many operations I have counted by web scraping every page. Now, 12 services have operations documented, but there are 25 services at last count in the projects.yaml governance in OpenStack. So the API ref today doesn't even cover all of the services. So I don't want to dwell on it, but I want to make sure people understand the magnitude of what we're working with. So I've talked a little bit about our current state. This is the site. This is how many contributors we've had. It's actually done really well, but there's no way to keep that kind of work going. It is an antiquated format right now. It's XML, and it is large. It's 1.8 .8 million lines, 1,800 JSON files, 161 bugs, which was actually down from 180. So I had this cool trick with ones and eights, but now there's more bugs fixed. This is a good thing. But it also means that we need to look at ways to how can we make this sustainable by spreading it out across the 25 services that need to write this doc, right? So it's a lot for one core team. I think we all can accept that as truth. Now. Many of our APIs were designed in 2010, and that was when Waddle was a upcoming standard for how to describe your REST APIs. However, and it allowed us to do things like have 22 post action slash actions on a compute um, resource. This started to spread into other areas of the OpenStack ecosystem. And that's not really able to be described by something like OpenAPI. The idea originally was that we would able to be using vendor extensions, which is an extensibility in Swagger, in OpenAPI, that would allow for this. But we're still finding that there are you know, a handful of APIs that it's not going to be easy to describe them directly with Swagger. So we have to build a path to that. So the other thing we discovered is that microversions, that is where you can actually get incremental version changes, make a call to the service, and it will tell you what microversion you are running. And so then you can do the call based on that microversion. Our docs don't support telling people about that at all. They literally have to grab the source code to find out. So 
we did do a swagger migration um, of all 12 services that were documented in Waddle, and you can go see that on developer.openstack.org slash draft, because these are drafts, slash swagger. And you can actually point to those in the swagger, editor.swagger.io to look at a side-by-side -side rendering. And because we were able to use vendor extensions, all of them will render. Something like compute takes a very long time. It's 231 operations just for the compute swagger file. Something like this one in the screenshot is 13 operations. So I think that there's a little bit of difference too between the services on what we'll be able to do. So what are we going to do? And there will be a deep dive on this. The intent of this is to give you information so that you know where and what to deep dive into. But we actually have a working proof of concept now that converts Swaddle to RST. And then Sean Dagg has built some Sphinx extensions that let us write these parameters files that we'll talk about in a little bit how we can eventually get to the open API standard and start to test against these. So write that one down. Wednesday, get to, get to the Hilton. And so this is what we have today as a proof of concept for migrating in this next release. So if you go to developer.openstack.org slash API ref slash compute, that is what you'll see. Now, I've taken enough time in this, and I want to make sure we get to hear these other awesome ideas about getting to implementation. Thanks. Hi. Uh, I will talk about implementation viewpoint. Uh, especially the problem uh, which make us recognize necessity of open API in Magnum. Uh, do you know Magnum? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Magnum is known as container as a service uh, which deploys a container orchestration engine such as Kubernetes or Docker Swarm and Mesos. So we have uh, three options to use Magnum. So if you, you want to use Magnum, uh, to, you must choose a container orchestration engine which you want. Uh, and also, client should, uh, should uh, <laughs> a client program like Horizon and uh, Python client should show which container orchestration engines are available in server side. So this is a problem. Uh, currently, we have no way to get uh, which container orchestration engines are available in server side. So hard coded value is in a uh, hard-coded value of client side, client size that don't make sense because these parameters are different in at each cloud. Uh, it means uh, some clouds may support Kubernetes and uh, Mesos, but other uh, clouds may support only Docker Swarm. So server should tell client which parameters are available. But how to get available parameters from server side? And so JSON Home was a candidate for notifying available API resources from server to clients. But original JSON Home doesn't cover parameters on specification. So open API covers both available API resources and parameters and some and some open source Kubernetes and etc provide this info via REST API. Hi. Client application fetch open API data from server side and show available option to users based on server uh, version, extension, configuration. And ultimately, the maintenance cost of client application, uh, client applications will be free. So this is a reason why we need open API. So next, Alex, please implement <laughs> open API <laughs> to Nova. <laughs> okay. 
I will give a short update about the current Nova status. So first thing, uh, the ex expectation for the uh, open API from the Nova side is more about uh, uh, the document, our uh, API reference document is totally out, out uh, of update. And the user really need to read our source code before using our API. So I think the part of the reason is due to uh, the, no, the Nova API reference document is not in the Nova repo, it's out of uh, uh, Nova repo. So most uh, uh, Nova reviewer won't go to, uh, won't uh, track on the, another project. Uh, so, so that leads to uh, no one can track on the quality on the API reference document. And uh, as Pierce and Annie mentioned, uh, the micro version support in the Nova. So, uh, until Mitaka release, we we already had, we already have micro version 2.25. Uh, in each version, we will have a little improvement for the, our API, and uh, this means we already have a 25 version API, and uh, without any document, it's due to the current uh, WAD, WADL two chain didn't support uh, micro version. So we want to resolve the problem. Uh, so we give it some uh, try on the open API. So we, we write some proof of, proof of concept code. Uh, so we found some good on that. So um, it's really good we can uh, auto generate all the API endpoint from the uh, uh, NOAA homemade WSGI stack. And, uh, uh, and we can implement something like we just uh, document, uh, close our code. This is really good for uh, the reviewer review the code and compare to the document. It's help to improve the uh, document quality. Uh, and uh, we also can discover all the micro render from the code and uh, we also can use that to generate open API spec to improve our testing, like we can use the New generated uh, uh, open API spec compared uh, already generated to ensure not breaking something uh, in, in our API. But uh, from the POC, we still find a lot of trouble. Uh, like uh, uh, Annie already mentioned, the action API. So in Nova, uh, like the API, you post a server, unpost a server, stop server, stop a server. All those, those action in a single one API endpoint, and uh, and that's not really a RESTful style, and uh, Open API doesn't support that. So we we, ha we have think about uh, use the Open API extension to support that, but that means uh, uh, we we use something extension. That means we drop the ecosystem of the Open API. So we create uh, something like OpenAPI, but it's not. It's, it's not. So except that uh, we can discover a lot of things from the no API code, but uh, still have something not, like the query parameters and some headers. Those thing is uh, uh, coding deep into the code. So we cannot get that out. And uh, we, uh, we're also missing some information, like the JSON schema for the response body, and uh, that's in the Tempest repo. And uh, another huge problem is uh, how to migrate the uh, exist uh, WADL document uh, to our new document. So as you know, no API, no one have a lot of API. So if we start from zero to fix our API, uh, our, our API document, that's a, a huge number of works. Uh, so this is thanks to Xian, uh, Xian point out we should use a central fox. So we shouldn't let user wait uh, uh, more few cycles uh, before fixing all the things. So uh, we should move the, our API reference document back to our repo then the NOAA contributor and the reviewer can help on the fixed current document. Uh, and then we begin, after we move our NOAA document, uh, 
Nova repo then we began to fix the bug for the API content and uh, catch up the document for the micro version. Uh, this is based on previously animation the, the syncs plus the rest strat text. So this is not an uh, open API. So but uh, it's it's a really good uh, thing is uh, uh, our exist uh, API guideline and the developer reference already based on this workflow and uh, uh, RSC is already fam familiar with uh, most developers so, so people can get a uh, help on the document without too much background and uh, any already have some tool for convert WSDL to the rest tools uh, that's a result of the migra migration problem. And uh, the current uh, uh, API reference already based on the new thing. This really thanks to Annie and uh, Sean. Uh, it really could work only in very short time, yeah. And uh, next, Kenichi will introduce uh, the further step. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, so as Alex said, uh, there is a lot of content bugs in RSC files, and we need to fix these bugs in this cycle. So uh, th there are several pieces and hints at different pieces for fixing these bugs. Uh, Nova has API routing information like URI, HTTP method, body, uh, and in addition, uh, Nova has a JSON schema for request validation. JSON schema contain parameter type, parameter name, and available values. That, that should be very useful for fixing these bugs. But uh, uh, JSON schema of uh, response exists in Tempest, which is integration test suites. Uh, because now Tempest validate uh, response body with this JSON schema. So, as you see, uh, uh, for, uh, the diagram, uh, in Tempest, each test sends a request to target services like Nova. And when Nova receives a request, uh, Nova selects an API operation based on URI, uh, HTTP method, and the body. And uh, Nova selects an API operation, and uh, before uh, operating, uh, executing uh, API operation, Nova uh, validate uh, request body with uh, response, uh, JSON schema. And if there is not any problem, uh, Nova execute API operation and send back to response to client like Tempest. Uh, when Tempest receive a uh, re uh, response, uh, Tempest check uh, validate response body with JSON schema. It's uh, by uh, this flow. So uh, uh, JSON schema of both request and uh, response is super valid and a great hint for fixing this bug because we are using this JSON schema every day on the get test. One idea is that uh, migrating JSON schema of uh, response from Tempest into Nova. By mig migrating all pieces into Nova repository, uh, we will be able to uh, fix this bug in Nova repository. In addition, uh, there is a Tempest plugin interface which can be, which can use uh, external code from Tempest. So even after uh, migrating uh, this schema into Nova, uh, Tempest still uh, can be used uh, uh, the migrator schema in the test. Uh, in addition, uh, Nova team will be able to use the migrated schema for unit tests and functional tests without any dev stack environment. That, that is a good to improve the quality in Nova also. Uh, after migrating uh, JSON schema into Nova, it is possible to convert JSON schema to uh, request and response parameter like this. And, uh, we can, uh, and we can fix this bug of uh, RSD contents. 
I created a, a prototype for converting this uh, JSON schema uh, to RST file uh, last week, and uh, that seems work fine now. Uh, so in the future, or in long term, uh, this info can be used for uh, open API data. Uh, we have already a prototype for this uh, uh, JSON schema to RST uh, conversion, and, uh, sorry. and uh, on open API, uh, JSON schema of uh, response can be used without any uh, conversion. Uh, so uh, that is the next step for my, uh, implementing Open API in Nova. Uh, in the next, uh, Motohiro will explain how to implement Open API in Magna, please. So uh, I'll talk about the implementation detail of Magna side. And unlike Nova, Magna uses PECAN and WSME framework for API implementation. So it's slightly easier than Nova to support Open API. Uh, we already have a prototype which supports Open API in Magnum. Basic concept is that API routing is gotten from PECAN and the response and request body is gotten from WSME. Uh, PECAN and WSME knows almost things which we want. Uh, about PECAN side, we are using PECAN Swagger library to get API routing information. And it provides a decorator. The author's out there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it provides a decorator to support getting the inf API routing information. But currently, it's uh, uh, still early stage to use. For example, uh, so there are several ways to customize API routing in PECAN. Uh, and the API routing of Magnum also is customized now. However, PECAN Swagger library doesn't support which customized routing. So we try to extend the decorator, which Pekan Swagger provides to adjust to our rules. So about WSME side, uh, WSME has all the information about the HTTP entity. So there are no magic to get uh, the information. And WSME ME also provides a decorator which method, which method requires which parameters and response body. For example, we can know that a get one method uh, requires these parameters for request, uh, this, in this case, types UUID or name. And we return bay, which WSME it defines. Uh, Magnum API knows everything necessary for Open API. So we can provide Open API data from PECAN and WSME. So next, please summarize implementation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I try to do that. And summary is uh, current situation, uh, WADL files are converted into RST files. Uh, and we already started to fixing content, contents of RST. And uh, JSON schema is useful for fixing these bugs. But uh, there is several uh, next steps for implementing Open API, and uh, uh, we we cannot find how to implement micro version and action APIs, and how to auto generate uh, header and queries from the code. Uh, we need to find uh, best way for this kind of thing. Uh, that's all. Uh, so, uh, are there any question or comment or something? 
uh, please use a uh, microphone for many audience. So you're saying that um, OpenAPI as a Linux Foundation community doesn't yet support microversions. Um, is there anybody going to talk to the Linux Foundation about either implementing that or kind of that balance, what, what, what we need to do so microversions can be supported inside of that or maybe viewpoints on that? Yeah, microversion is uh, OpenStack specific and uh, uh, Open API initiative cannot uh, does not know it at all at this time. So uh, we need to communicate uh, this uh, micro version thing with there. That is the best way as the open source community. That's a nice point. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Have you guys uh, used the Swagger JSON to automate testing or generate test cases for your APIs? Does that mean uh, we can generate tests from uh, Swag, uh, Open API specification? Yeah, yeah, to test your APIs <laughs> based on your documentation. Ah, uh, nice point. That is an interesting thing. So yeah, I I think I think. It is the it is possible to do that, and uh, mm. now te in the tempest, uh, all tests are implemented with uh, some static code, and uh, if we do do that, uh, we need to mm, create auto generated tests without without uh, open API before uh, as a previous step. After that, it is possible to implement this uh, test case. That is, this point is very interesting for me. Thank you. Please. Hi, so uh, you looked at Nova and Magnum, um, and it seemed like it was never quite a perfect fit. For newer projects, are we putting out guidelines so that it would fit perfectly with OpenAI? Um, yeah. Oh, great question. Thank you. Um, yeah, the API Working Group has a documentation guideline, um, and I've recently revised it, where if your API can be described perfectly by OpenAPI Swagger, by all means use it. The thing we still need developer work on is publishing HTML from that, it, but if just copying up swagger.json like we've done in the draft format would be okay, then that's fine. And I, there are... I'm trying to think of what percentage could be described by OpenAPI. I haven't done that exact test, but I bet 10 could be out of the 25. Yeah. Nova's an exception. <laughs> it's giant. Just uh, one follow-up question with that uh, test data uh, generation, right? Like, um, um, is it possible to uh, develop a API sandbox also, um, in addition to the test data, so that like uh, any anybody can uh, play around with the APIs, like with the test data, in that environment? I have a blueprint from 2012 that asks for an API sandbox. That would be excellent. And actually, um, in order, I look at it as. If you don't have compute, you don't really have anything you can do that's interesting in a sandbox. Um, so that would be the hurdle, is getting a compute open API that could then do the, the sandbox. So, and you might have more ideas. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I cannot catch the conversation. <laughs> so it would be, a vision would be TriStack, it's a, free OpenStack Cloud, you get an account and you could just do the sandbox on TriStack, so an idea. The other option would be like uh, the OSIC, like uh, building that uh, thousand node cluster or something, so we can use some, some portion of it, at least. Uh, uh,
Thanks for coming.